I'm not going to give you uh, surnames on this one, but I could because the family are perfectly happy for me to do it. It's a story from Jenny. Jenny uh, is now 22 years old, and when she was five, she had leukemia, underwent three treatments, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, a bone marrow transplant, five-year-old kid. And she almost lost her life during her bone marrow transplant. And then, of course, when she was in remission, uh, there was all the business of getting back to normal. Uh, she took a trip to Disneyland in Paris, funded by the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and to Lapland to see the real Santa Claus. Uh, the Anthony Nolan Bone Marrow Trust supported that. So, let's come up a few years. That's her when she's five. And she's had leukemia, and she's been in and out of hospital. A few years ago, as Jenny says in her own words, she could tell by the look on the doctor's face and knew the answer before he'd even said anything. And then he said, I'm terribly sorry, Jenny, but the leukemia has returned. And she stopped looking at Dr. Caswell and looked at her mum. And Jenny's mum started to cry, and all she could think of was how hard it was going to be this time. But she knew exactly what she was going to go through. She was worried about the hair falling out again, the embarrassing side effects that come from chemotherapy. And she knew she had cancer but couldn't understand why it kept coming back. And this time she was more scared. Her body had already taken so much chemotherapy in the past and she found herself wondering that question, will it work this time? If it hasn't done its job so far, why not? So they got back home to her sisters, and they told them the bad news, and they cuddled and they cried. But the truth was, Jenny just wanted to get back and get started on the chemotherapy. And she remembers wiping her tears and thinking, right, positive now. We have to get on with it, so let's be positive in the thinking. They went back to Alderhay, and the nurse showed her to her bed where she'd spend the next couple of months. Morning came very quickly, and she was off to theatre to have her fourth central line fitted and the smell of anaesthetic spread through the whole room, and she felt frightened, but she soon relaxed when the anaesthetist came in with a Thunderbird's hat on. He put the mask over her face, the anaesthetic helped her drift off to sleep, and then she woke to find the long white tube sticking out of her chest, which hurt a little, but she soon got used to it, and she started chemo. Very frightened of that, but she knew what to expect. And a couple of months after she started the chemo, it was her 17th birthday, and uh, Mum had just shaved her hair off. She couldn't bear to wake up seeing it on the pillow or having patches of hair around her head. So they went one step further and shaved it off. And she wasn't ashamed to be bald, because she had been several times in the past, but for a young lady, it is tough. And she was 17. <clears throat> the nurses and her family had all planned a party for her, in the den up on the teenage ward, and even though she was tired and poorly, she had a great day. A couple of weeks passed, and she wasn't taking the chemo very well at all. So she was moved to a cubicle, which was isolated from the main ward, and a couple of weeks later, she ended up with pneumonia, which made her even worse. It took a bad turn on her heart and lungs. She found it difficult to breathe, let alone do anything else, and at one point, Dr. Caswell said to her parents that he didn't think she would pull through. She was weak, she was frail, she was on an oxygen machine, she couldn't speak very much, she became diabetic. The nurses had to come and take blood from her fingers every hour, every day, even when she was sleeping. But she stayed as positive as she could, making the nurses and herself laugh. And she always rocked the pyjama look with the shiny head and the big black eyelashes. Mum then noticed that she was having severe nosebleeds. I mean, horrible blood was not just coming out of her nose but out of her mouth and she didn't want anyone to look at her apart from her mother now her mother was perfect through it all always reassuring her that everything would be okay carrying her to the bathroom changing the bed if she had an accident did everything she possibly could she was on a drip Jenny when morty morphine sulfate was in the drip and it was for pain and sometimes, because it would relieve the pain and also make, me, make her feel as high as a kite, she'd just press it to feel good. She was alone one afternoon when her family were at work, and she thought she was finally strong enough to walk to the drinks machine to get a drink, but when she got there, she collapsed and wet herself. She wanted to call for help, but she felt really embarrassed. So when she finally got up, she went back to her room, tried to sort herself out, and then 
fainted, and she fainted on the lavatory once, and she was finally allowed home for good in October of 2006. She was 17, taking maintenance chemotherapy, going back to Alderhey for regular health checks every fortnight. When she was 20, she was diagnosed with leukemia again, and she still doesn't know why it returns. She was looking forward to the new year of 2011 and then found herself on an oxygen machine and a drip of fluids to prevent dehydration. She went to the loo one night and as she walked out, she said to her father, I think I'm going to faint. And two seconds later, she did. The nurse, Ian, and her father had to lift her up and put her on a bed. The toilet curse. She also lost her voice. And she sounded like a croaky old man, which her boyfriend found very funny. So, why this our tune? I'll tell you why. Because after all that, there's a separate section in this letter with Jenny's personal thoughts and feelings. It's weird, she says, how you can go through life with something affecting you but not actually understanding or realising what it means. I, says Jenny, was diagnosed with leukaemia when I was two, and it's taken me until now, aged nearly 22, to understand it at all. I feel extremely lucky to have an amazing... supportive family. I couldn't have got through it without them. Makes me think just how much you need your family and how much I love them. <clears throat> no matter what you go through, says Jenny, or how long it takes, just remember it does get better. Life does go back to normal. She doesn't think she's gone a full year without something happening to her health-wise, but she doesn't let it get her down. She doesn't know when she'll be in total remission, or if she ever will. And people who know her and her situation say, don't you get annoyed or tired of going back and forth to hospital? And she does. She says so every now and then because she wouldn't be human if she didn't. She's been a patient since 1991, so she's used to it now, and it's... Now 2011, and she goes back and forth to Alderhey for all kinds of x-rays and medical procedures. She's a strong person, so she gets on with whatever, whoever it is that is up there throws at her. But she does have days when she asks herself, why me? And when it, is it going to be my turn for a dose of luck? Here she is, 22. Jenny loves her life, everybody that's in it. She has fun, she lives it the best way she possibly can. And she's seen children arrive after being diagnosed and watched them leave in remission. She's seen doctors and nurses and even anaesthetists retire after meeting them the day she started. And she couldn't be more thankful <clears throat> for the care and kindness she's received over the year. She doesn't look at cancer as a problem. She includes it as part of her life. She's been a cancer patient at Alderhey Children's Hospital for nearly 20 years. And what she wants to do is inspire young cancer patients and their families with this story, this our tune. And to say thank you, of course. But the final message really is this. With a little bit of faith and optimism, we can all get through anything. Just keep your chin up. That you settled down, that you found a girl and you're married now. I had to love, but sometimes it hurts and stays. There's more to tell you about, uh, Jenny, but today is not the day to tell you the way the story has continued, except to say one thing, maybe. Um, I don't know who it was who said it. Uh, courage is rightly esteemed the first of human qualities because it is the quality that guarantees all others. Kind of encapsulates Jenny, doesn't it? That's Jenny, her story, which I'll tell you more about on Monday. Um, and all I can say is thanks to her and to her father and to her mother as well for trusting us with it.
Simon Bates. Smooth Radio Breakfast. With Direct Line. Making insurance straightforward.